driven cars that can top that nowadays. Now what's so cool about this car is there's not a giant V8 internal combustion motor that drives it. Even though you can't see it, underneath of this computer there is an electric motor that is powered by 6800 lithium ion batteries. Now even though these batteries are automotive grade, the chemistry makeup is very similar to what you would find in your laptop computer battery. This is just frozen water. Seventy percent of the Earth's surface is covered with it. Well, what are we riding on right now? It's so much water, right? Well, maybe not. Take a closer look. Now water is one thing, but what about metal? You think I can turn this into liquid? Now that's gonna require a lot more heat, but it just so happens that I have a lot more heat. Now you can see the metal heating up. It's turning red and it's getting hot. Now it's beginning to melt. And there you have it, it's melting away. Now as soon as I take away the heat source, the metal's gonna cool off and go right back to its solid state. Now this car has passed its smog test, but you don't have to take my word for it. I wanna show you what the levels of the toxic gases would be before the catalytic converter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off this sensor and test it right from here. Now these are the smog test results for the car when it passed. Yes, I promise you, it actually passed. Looking at the carbon monoxide levels, you can see that they're almost non-existent. That's when the car is going at 15 miles an hour. Now even with the car not going anywhere, sitting at idle speed, you can see that these carbon monoxide levels are considerably higher. Now that is toxic before the catalytic converter. After the catalytic converter, it becomes carbon dioxide, making it a healthier place for everybody. And that, my friends, is why chemistry matters. Bye.